Hi everyone. It's a bit cold in here, so we made a little fire. We um, Today I'd like to show you the experiments that I did to nickel plate copper uh, because I need to replace the electrodes of my hydrogen generator. The reason that I'm going to replace the electrodes in my hydrogen generator is because I use stainless steel electrodes and the anode will always oxidize and even stainless steel and because stainless steel contains chromium that chromium will be oxidized out of the steel and that's the yellow stuff you see so there's chromium oxide and probably chromium oxide 4 because of the yellow color, I guess. A anyway, it's uh, very toxic and can cause cancer. And that's just something I don't want. And I especially wanted to thank everyone that gave me advice in the comments, warned me about the chromium. And also someone gave me some very good information about using nickel plated copper as an electrode, because nickel is much more corrosion resistant and also copper conducts electricity much better. So it will probably be more efficient that way. So please, if you have a setup like this, be very careful. Do not touch the solution because it can even cause cancer when it's being absorbed through the skin. In another video I will take the hydrogen generator apart and I will show you how I do it and how I dispose of the chemical waste. I've let most of the solution run out of the generator so I have less waste to dispose of. That's why it looks so nasty. As an experiment I put soldering tin on copper just to see what would happen. And as you can see that didn't work at all so it had to be nickel. Okay, the nickel plating method I use, I learned from the King of Random. It's actually very easy because you just use normal white vinegar and then you add a little bit of table salt. This just to increase conductivity. And stir it a bit. And as a nickel source, I used these pure nickel strips that are being used for creating battery packs. The King of Random used pure nickel guitar strings. Then he pulled off the outside wire, which also works, but this is a little bit cheaper, I think. And let's fold this up. So we have a large quantity of nickel. This cost me about 15 bucks, I think. So it's not very expensive. And this is going to be the anode. This is going to be the cathode side, which is the minus. Now apply the wires. As a power source, I use my very dodgy transformer with a high power dimmer. This is way overkill, but I have this thing for my uh, hydrogen generator, so why not use it? Okay, so now let's apply some voltage. It's about five volts, I think. I don't know the amperage, that's not really important. As long as your solution doesn't get too hot, then it's okay. So, now we wait. Well, that zigzag didn't work at all, because it corroded away at the top and it fell off. But I have a solution for that later in the video. Okay, so this is the result. Now it's nickel acetate. And I will put on these gloves because apparently it can cause cancer. So, and I don't know if it will be absorbed by my skin like chromium oxides do. But to be safe, I'll just put on gloves. And it's always nicer because it's always better not to have it on your hands. This is a batch I made earlier, so we'll put that in too. So I can nickel plate longer strips. Also, safety glasses is not a bad idea. There's some pieces of metal oxide, nickel oxide or something in it, but that's not really a problem. Now what was happening while I was making the nickel acetate, if this is the electrode, then the nickel starts dissolving and it, if you have too high current, it forms like little craters along the side. And eventually these craters will corrode inward like this and like this and then these pieces fall off, so you waste a percentage of your nickel if you do it with too much of a current. So it's better to just take it slow. But if you're in a hurry and you have an unlimited supply of nickel, then just knock yourself out. Okay, well now, sand this piece of copper so the oxide layer is off. Okay, so now it's nicely sanded. 
and we'll drill a hole in it. Okay, the hole is in and the edges are nice and smooth. And I made this hole because a hydrogen generator also has holes. And I need to know how difficult it is to get a layer of nickel to the inside of this hole. Because that also needs to have a coating of course. So, let's test it. So the cathode side is the side where you need to put your copper. So, and then the same amount of voltage. It starts bubbling again. And very rapidly there's coming a very thin layer of nickel on it. You can see that this side is bubbling a lot. And this side is bubbling much less, so I probably have to turn it around in a while. Okay, it's been one minute. Sorry about that. And let's see how we did. Look, a very nice layer of nickel. But you can see that the sides are, don't know what it is, if that's nickel or that it's just copper or whatever. The back side also has nickel on it. And you can see here that there's, yeah, I don't know if the camera picks it up, but you can see that there are parts which do not have nickel on them. So let's put it in a little longer. So I flipped it over, because one side looked a little bit thinner than the other side, so, well, it's all an experiment, so we'll see. Okay, so as you can see, it's now completely coated. There's no copper to be seen anymore underneath, so let's test how well it does in a sodium hydroxide solution being the anode because that's the part that always corrodes away okay everything is ready now let's apply the voltage this is the anode side that's the cathode side that used for the cathode side just a normal uh, pure nickel strip because this part is not under investigation so only at this side i have a nickel plated piece of copper there we go See how it did in this short period. Well, it does something to it. Let's just let it run for a while. Okay, something interesting has happened, because the layer of nickel was apparently not thick enough, so at the edges here it's corroded away, so I think I just need to have a thicker layer or whatever, I need to sort that out. But the fun thing is that that copper deposited on this side. How cool is that? At least I think it's copper, it's not stuck very well to it. Okay, I have to investigate that. These black edges you see on the copper, I assumed were a result of the copper being too long exposed to the acetate solution. And therefore the acetate would create an oxide layer on the copper. So I put a small piece of copper in the nickel acetate solution without any current running through it, just to see what happened. After about a week of this piece of copper being in a nickel acetate solution, there's some kind of crystalline layer deposited on it. And it's probably copper oxide, because after a few days the layer turned completely green, which indicates that it's now copper carbonate from the CO2 it absorbed from the air. Okay, it turns out that sanding the piece of copper is just not enough. This piece of copper is quite dirty, and we'll put it in hydrochloric acid to remove the oxide layer and to dissolve any oils that are on it. You see it's already quite clean and just rub it off like so it's a, it's a naughty spot okay i'm gonna sand this piece anyway that's clean enough after cleaning the piece of copper in the hydrochloric acid it's best to just clean it off a bit in a bit of distilled or demineralized water so you don't contaminate your nickel acetate solution. 
Okay, so because the anode side will dissolve, and because I don't want to be coming back every now and then to lower this piece of nickel into the solution, I made this contraption. When it dissolves, it will just drop down and feed another piece in. Okay, so now it's in the solution. Now only have a small piece of nickel actually dipped into the solution to restrict the current. Because it turns out that even the current that this small USB charger delivers is a bit too high. Okay, so you can see here that the piece of nickel is about 2 millimeters in the solution. This is really the maximum amount of bubbles that you can have on your copper cathode. If it's more than this, then the nickel will just not stick to the copper and the copper will oxidize and then of course the nickel plating will not occur anyway. So, very little current. It's only about 105 milliamps that's running. I've seen some nickel plating uh, operations where they heated up the nickel acetate and that's probably uh, to speed up the process. That's of course a good thing to do but I don't have a hot plate so for now we'll do it just cold and maybe later I will heat it up some way but that's something for another video. Before I started plating this piece of copper it looked like this with a lot of sharp edges and a very pointy imprint of my scissors just to see how these would get covered. And as you can see it very well did. Looks pretty cool I think. So I'm testing the electrode now and I'm running it at about 3 amps and see it's 8 volts. So it's a lot more than I use in my hydrogen generator, so the stress on the electrode is also much more. So if it holds up in this, it'll be okay. Okay, so it has now been running for about six hours. You can see here that there's a little bit of blackness on it. It's probably just a very tiny bit of nickel oxide or something. But of course there will be a bit of oxidation occurring because nickel has such a high resistance to oxidation. Oxidation will be very slow and therefore this is very suitable to be used as an electrode. And let's measure the thickness. There occurred so little oxidation that the nickel layer didn't even decrease by a measurable amount. So it's pretty good. So this is what I'm going to use in the next setup and we'll see how it goes. Of course this uh, oxidation has been a little bit faster than it will do in the hydrogen generator because the temperature of the water here, because this is a very inefficient setup, because I had 8 volts running across it instead of the 1.5 or 2 volts which is the maximum. So the temperature rose significantly to about 60 degrees and then I poured in a little bit of cold water to drop the temperature a bit. So in the higher temperature also oxidation uh, goes faster. So as long as you keep the temperature down in the generator then you'll probably be very much okay. So this is what it looked like after 6 hours. Not a scratch. But if anyone has some good advice, please leave it in the comments. Okay, that's it for now. In another video I will open up the hydrogen generator and show you the insides, how it looks now. And uh, also do a test run with just one electrode and see how that works. So please like, share and subscribe. Check me out on Facebook and Instagram, because I do regular updates of the projects I'm working on. and. Uh, See you next time!